Hello, Westover Warriors. Today we're talking about the security standards training, and this is in direct response to the leak that happened out at Otis Air National Guard Base uh, about a month ago. Um, we've been directed by the uh, Secretary of Defense um, through AFRC to review all of our security posture and to do a specific training. The next slide will be the commander's comments. Recently, an unauthorized disclosure of classified information occurred potentially damaging our nation's security. Commanders and civilian leaders have the highest responsibility to understand the potential impact these types of egregious events have on our global security posture. The extent to which they undermine public confidence and the significant obligation military, civilian, and contractor support personnel has in protecting classified and sensitive information at all times. Therefore, I am directing a security stand down. This stand down is an opportunity to gauge the health of our local security posture and discuss ways to avoid these types of events in the future. This is directly from Colonel Buchanan, the 439th Air Wing Wing Commander. Uh, the next slide we will be talking about will be what he expects us to do um, for the stand down. The stand down objectives. Reporting. How do we report? Safeguarding and access. Pre-publication reviews and public release. Cybersecurity and information security. Training. Definitions and explanations. And we have a few examples of case studies of some of the leaks that have happened in the past. few more of the stand down objectives we will be talking about the need to know what does need to know truly mean conduct a 100% check of need to know for all personnel all security managers in each unit are checking and making sure that people have the proper accesses and still need that access and they are taking people out of access that don't need it anymore and we'll talk about the difference between access and eligibility as the slides go on. Security standards. Protecting classified national security information. Who is supposed to protect classified security? Everybody. Everybody on this installation, whether you have a security clearance or not, you may come in contact with classified information. What happens if a roads and grounds guy happens to be mowing out in the back 40 and somebody dropped a secret piece of paper and they find it on a fence line? What are they supposed to do with it? They immediately protect that information and they get it to their security manager, the information protection officer, or any supervisor. You're not supposed to read it because you do not have a need to know. Continuous evaluation and reporting. Any person who has a secret security clearance or higher is now in continual evaluation. So what does that mean for you? Continual evaluation means that within every 10 or 15 minutes, your social security number is being run through a system and it's looking for any derogatory information, whether it's criminal background, whether it's any kind of drug use, financial stuff, Anything that happens to fall into the 13 adjudicative guidelines. If you want to know what those 13 adjudicative guidelines are, call John McIntyre or Scott Daniel at the IP office, or you can also contact any security assistant in your unit, and they will be able to get you what the 13 adjudicative guidelines are. Why are those important? Those are seriously important because... If any of those things happen to you, it's incumbent on you as holding a security clearance to make sure that you inform us of what's happening. Again, unlike the old days when we would not know if, if you didn't report it, we will know now usually within 30 days of any derogatory information. And then we have to report that to the adjudication facility within 72 hours. So any kind of incident that occurs, who do you report that to your supervisor, the information protection office, activity security manager or assistant. Um, if you happen to be uh, in a place where you have a special security officer, which we don't have at Westover because we do not have a top secret skiff here, um, but if you happen to be TDY, 
and you're in a place like that, they are also somebody that you can talk to and they will get you to the right person um, to report an incident. Let's talk about the counter insider threat. This is a new program that falls under the information protection umbrella. This and CUI are two new programs. Specifically, let's talk about counter insider threat. What is the counter insider threat? Well, if you look at any of the major leaks from uh, Snowden on up to this last one on the Cape, the one thing that they all have in common is they were all vetted. They all had security clearances. They all had access. The problem is they had access to stuff that they probably shouldn't have had access to, which is a different different thing we're talking about right here now. But anyways, they were all vetted. They all had clearances, and that is what we call an insider threat. How do we counter against that? It's pretty difficult. Um, everybody who has a clearance has already been vetted. So the adjudication facility has said, yes, you have that license. You can go and look at classified information. After that, we have counter insider threat. Now we're looking for criminal, violent, abusive behaviors, substance abuse and addictive behaviors, judgment, character, psychological conditions. All of these is what we consider counter insider threat. If any of this happens with any of your people, please let us know. Uh, what we do with that is we send a report up. It goes to the DITMAC, which is the Defense Insider Threat Management and Anal Analyst Center. Um, we send the report to AFRC. They send it to that. And they analyze these risks. So what started the counter-insider threat? Well, about six years ago, there was a shooting down at the Navy Yard in Washington, D.C., a contractor went in and he started shooting up a skiff and I think there were four or five individuals that died and numerous people were injured. When the report was done and they did an analysis of what happened and how this could happen, the individual that did that, he was a army person, he came out of the army with a top secret clearance and he started working for a contractor. Well, he was fired and let go for cause for psychological conditions. The thing at the time was nobody ever put that into the DIS program, which is the verification system for security clearances. So uh, there was no way of tracking that. So he went to another contractor and he got fired from another contractor. And then he went to another contractor and he got fired from there. So there was no way to piece that information together. So that's why we now have the counter insider threat program. Again, up on the screen you can see uh, all of the different things that we're looking for that we have to set in um, as it pertains to a counter-insider threat. Let's talk about safeguarding and access for a minute. It is everybody's responsibility to safeguard classified information. Everybody. An authorized disclosure of information does not automatically declassify that information. So what does that mean? That means that even if you see classified information in the papers, it doesn't mean that that information was declassified. It's still classified. You're still not supposed to talk about that information. That's what that means. Again, everybody is supposed to safeguard information. If you're working on any kind of secret document and it is out of the authorized GSA container, you become that container and you are the one that's responsible for protecting it. Access. What does access mean? A lot of people get access and eligibility confused. Eligibility means that when you come into the Air Force and you have to have a secret security clearance, you fill out an SF-86, an investigator comes and looked in your background, he talks to your neighbors and other people that you put down on there as your references, and that is what eligibility means. So they've done a complete background investigation on you, and they have determined that, yes, you are of good character, and you can have access to classified information. That is considered eligibility. Just because you have a security clearance does not mean that you have access. That means you have the eligibility. Access means that once you have the eligibility, you have a need to know, 
and you have an NDA sign, a commander can grant you access to classified information when he wants. He can also pull that access for any and no reason at all if he wants to as well. So that is the complete difference between access and eligibility. What is need to know? According to DOD Manual 5200.02, need to know is a determination made by a possessor of classified information that a prospective recipient in the interest of national security has a requirement for access to knowledge of or possession of the classified information in order to perform tasks or services essential to the fulfillment of an official U.S. government program. Knowledge, possession of, or access to classified information shall not be afforded to any individual solely by virtue of the individual's office, position, or security eligibility. Let's review two case studies to demonstrate why need to know is important. Annabella Montez was a senior intelligence analyst at the DIA who transmitted sensitive and classified military and intelligence information for at least 16 years to Cuba. She gave Cubans the names of four U.S. military agents, details on at least one special access program, defense contingency planning for Cuba, and aerial surveillance photos. Chelsea, formerly Bradley Manning, was a U.S. Army soldier who disclosed to WikiLeaks nearly three-quarters of a million classified and sensitive but unclassified military and diplomatic documents. The footage released included videos of the July 12, 2007 Baghdad airstrike, 2009 Granai airstrike in Afghanistan, and 482,832 Army reports that came to be known as the Iraq War Logs and Afghan War Diary. She was convicted in July 2013 for violations of the Espionage Act and 22 other offenses. It is from situations like these that we have learned that it is not only having the appropriate security clearance eligibility to access information, you must also have a need to know. In both of these cases, the individuals had easy access to information outside their need to know, which they then used for detrimental acts. To help prevent these types of situations, there are specific things you need to do. Having a security clearance eligibility is only half of the issue. You must also have a need to know. Need to know imposes a dual responsibility on all authorized holders of classified information. Limit your requests for information. Request information only if you have a need to know. Be prepared to explain and justify your requests. If you think you need to go outside your standard lane of responsibility, discuss the reason why with your supervisor or the program manager first. Verify all requests for classified information that you have access to. You are required to ask the other person sufficient information for you to make an informed decision about their need to know. Specifically, verify security clearance eligibility. Verify individual has appropriate access level and validate need to know. Supervisors and co-workers who believe an employee is consistently accessing information outside their area of responsibility without permission should notify their security manager. What does this mean to me? Refrain from discussing classified information in hallways, cafeterias, elevators, restrooms, or smoking areas where the discussion may be overheard by persons who do not have a need to know. Report any co-worker who repeatedly violates the need to know principles to your security officer. Be careful when meeting with former colleagues. Do not keep them up to date on classified developments after being transferred to a new assignment if they do not have a current need to know. When placing information on a computer system, you must first verify that everyone who has access to the information has the appropriate security clearance eligibility, access level, and need to know. Make appropriate accommodations. Need to know is everyone's responsibility. Always verify the information you share and justify what you request. Pre-publication reviews and public release. Did you know that by having a security clearance, if you are writing a book or any kind of manuscript, book, thesis, conference papers, briefings, anything to do with the government, whether it's old information or not, you must have to ha you must have a pre-publication review before public release. 
There's an example we have when we're looking at cases um, and a few slides from now. There was an individual that ended up losing $6.8 million because he did not go through a pre-publication review. Now, uh, one of our classes, I asked if there were any authors in there, and believe it or not, there was an individual who's an author, and uh, we will talk more on him because some of his stuff may uh, talk about, um, might rise to the level of having to have a pre-publication review. So I just want to know, I just want everybody to understand that if you are an author and you're writing anything about the government, you have to have a pre-publication review. And we can walk you through those steps. So again, if anybody out there really has that uh, uh, need, please call us and we will walk you through uh, the steps to do that. Cybersecurity and information. <clears throat> Not only are we doing this training, but every unit and every commander has been tasked to review all of our security uh, processes and procedures. Uh, so that's going on. The cyber community, they're looking at all of their stuff. They do on a daily basis as well. Um, it's a tough job. We have all of our adversaries, whether it's China or the Soviet Union or Russia, um, and all the other ones in between that are trying to get our information uh, through the IT systems. It's a very, very difficult task, and it's continued, um, but it never stops. So just understand that the security stand-down is not only this training, but it's also a complete review uh, that we've been going through about a week and a half now for all security procedures. A compromise of security incident in which there is an unauthorized disclosure of classified information. Just because you have classified information, if you do not agree with a program, you cannot disclose it to the media. If you do, it is not a whistleblower. It is an unauthorized disclosure. And why do we need to stop the unauthorized disclosures? It undermines the DOD mission. There's a loss of public trust. And it compromises sources. When it comes to human, which is human intelligence, or human intelligence, compromises are, are very, very dangerous because it puts a lot of people's lives at stake. Whistleblower. If you have classified information and you want to be a whistleblower, there are ways to do that. Giving it to the media is not being a whistleblower. That is being an, that is an unauthorized disclosure. If you want to be a whistleblower and you really have something that you need to discuss and you need to uh, talk about it and it's classified information, here's a list of people that you can actually divulge that information to legally. That's a member of Congress, uh, Inspector General, a member of DOD Audit Inspection or law, uh, law Enforcement Organizations, any person in the chain of command. Individuals who leak information. Well, there's a number of reasons why people leak information. Financial gain. It used to be quite often was financial gain. Uh, Recently, though, a lot of it is politically motivated, um, disagreement with uh, official government. I think that was uh, Snowden. He was uh, he was did not agree with one of the uh, programs that the uh, FBI and CIA were running, and he felt that he had nowhere to go, um, and so he leaked it to the papers. So he was pretty much one that was the that he had a disagreement with the government believe the public have a need to know, right? That's not up to you to decide. If it's classified information, that is not up to you to decide. We have OCAs, which is Original Classification Authorities, and they are the ones who determine what is classified and what is not classified, and EGO. Airman Tech Syria, that was out on the Cape and the guard unit out there, for all accounts right now, it looks like he divulged that because of his ego. He wanted to show off to some friends that he knew something that they, they, they didn't. So I believe that's ego, but that's yet to be seen. It's going to be interesting to see when it's all do, uh, done and what the case is. Right now, there's so many rumors out there. Um, we'll have to wait and see what, what the outcome of, of that is. Uh, a couple case examples. Benjamin Bishop, he was a government contractor and a retired Army 05 emailed classified information to a Chinese woman who he had a romantic relationship with. He was arrested in 13. He ended up serving 87 months. 
of imprisonment and three years of supervised release. Matt Bissonette. Remember I was telling you before about the pre-publication review? Well, he was a former Navy SEAL and he was uh, one of the guys that went in and was on the mission that killed Osama bin Laden. He wrote No Easy Day. Well, he never went and did a pre-publication review and some of the stuff that he was, it was in his book when he released it was still classified. So, he agreed to forfeit of $6.8 million in royalties and speaking fees as part of a non-prosecution agreement. That's a lot of money to lose because you didn't go through a proper procedure. A Navy E-4 um, attempted to deliver classified information to a foreign government. Uh, 48 years in prison. Marine E-7 he had four co-conspirators. They were arrested in October 2006 for leaking classified information to the Los Angeles Terrorism Early Warning Group. He pled guilty and received 26-month jail sentence. If you see any kind of security incident, if you're going through your units and you feel that something isn't right and you want a complete security review, talk to your supervisors, talk to your commanders, talk to your security managers or assistants in your units or call the information protection office we will gladly gladly come out and oversee and take a look at any of the any of the problems that you think might be out there and discuss what we need to do to clean them up or help you guys out and making sure that everything is secure Here are some security point of contacts. Mr. Austin Tossi, headquarters AFRC. Mr. Tossi is the information protection uh, point of contact. The counter insider threat program is Mr. Dan, Danny Hunley at AFRC. And of course, you can contact myself, Scott Daniel, or John McIntyre at West Ovea Reserve Base, or any of your security managers in your units. We administer five security programs, information security, personnel security, industrial security, CUI, and the counter insider threat. Thank you for your time. We just want to let everybody understand how important it is to protect classified information, and it's everybody's responsibility to know what the rules are and to stop any problems before they happen. The next slide is going to be how you sign in. If you can put your phone over that um, and hit the uh, scan barcode there, uh, fill, it, fill in the uh, sheet and you'll get credit for this course. Again, if there's any questions, call the Information Protection Office at Westover. Thank you.